Hello and welcome back to the video lecture series on Reconstruction. In the last video lecture, you learned about how President Lincoln and Johnson's plan did very little to change life for African Americans in the South, and how the lack of change angered Republicans in Congress. Today's lecture looks at how those radical Republicans took over and ushered in the second phase of Reconstruction known as Radical Reconstruction. To begin with, the Republicans had three main goals for reconstructing the South. First, they wanted to prevent former leaders of the Confederacy from returning to political power. One of the leading radical Republicans was this man, Charles Sumner. You may remember him. He was the senator from Massachusetts who was nearly beaten to death by South Carolina Congressman Preston Brooks. Do you think he may have had some hard feelings toward the South? Second, they wanted the Republican Party to become powerful in the South. And third, they wanted the federal government to take steps to ensure African Americans gain political equality. To do so, they implemented a much different plan. One of the first steps they did was to establish the Freedmen's Bureau to help former slaves adjust to freedom. The Freedmen's Bureau, which was vetoed by Andrew Johnson, helped feed and resettle former slaves, help them find employment, and most notably, establish schools for African American children and adults. Congress also passed, despite Johnson's veto, the Civil Rights Act of 1866, which made African Americans citizens and stated that they were to be treated equally. To make sure the law would not be ruled unconstitutional, Republicans introduced the 14th Amendment which stated all persons born or naturalized in the U.S. were citizens and entitled to equal protection of the laws. In 1867, Congress, despite another presidential veto, passed the Military Reconstruction Act, which divided the South into five military districts occupied by federal troops. The troops enforced voting and civil rights for freedmen. Fed up with Johnson's interference, Congress moved to impeach the president after he fired his Secretary of War, Edwin Stanton, who was a supporter of Congress's plan. By firing Stanton, Johnson violated the Tenure of Office Act. The Tenure of Office Act required that the Senate approve the removal of any government official whose appointment required the Senate's consent. Although Johnson was impeached, he remained in office. The Senate vote for removal fell just one vote short. Although he remained in office, Johnson's political clout was greatly diminished. He served out the rest of his term and did not run for re-election. In 1868, the Republicans nominated Ulysses S. Grant, who was elected president. With Grant as president and Republicans in control of Congress, African Americans in the South enjoyed a period of political equality. African Americans voted, and many were elected to state and even federal office. In 1870, the Fifteenth Amendment was ratified, which stated that states could not deny the right to vote based on color. In addition to giving the federal government more power over the states, the Fourteenth and Fifteenth Amendments addressed issues of racial equality. However, women's rights activists were quick to point out that these amendments did not address the issues of gender equality. Suffrage could not be denied based on race. It did not mean that the right to vote could not be denied based on gender. By 1870, all former Confederate states were readmitted into the Union, and African Americans and the Republican Party enjoyed a period of political prosperity. At the same time, however, the resentment of white Southerners was continuing to build. Many white Southerners viewed Reconstruction as an intrusion of their way of life and embraced the idea of Southern redemption, which meant a return to white supremacy in the South. This white backlash began to erode the gains that had been made. Southerners referred to Republicans as scalawags and carpetbaggers. For many years, the Solid South was a reliable source of votes for the Democratic Party. Only recently has that trend been reversed. During this period, white supremacist groups, most notably the Ku Klux Klan, emerged and intimidated or murdered African Americans. 
Slowly but surely, former Confederates returned to political power throughout the South. By 1876, they were ready to challenge Republican control. The presidential election of that year brought about an end to Reconstruction, much to the disadvantage of African Americans in the South. In the next video lecture, we'll look at how that happened and what that meant.